Once we get our MKID devices out of the fab, they're pretty useless. They get cut out of a wafer and we just got this square of sapphire and tantalum and all these other materials that um, needs to be mounted up into a sensor box before we can actually do anything with it. And the sensor box has to be pretty special. Since our MKIDs work at radio frequencies, so they usually work in the four to eight gigahertz range, it's not like low frequency electronics where you can just have a dangling wire that gets hooked up to it. You have to be really careful about microwave hygiene. This, is, this, this becomes important when the, um, the wavelength of your circuit, so the four to eight gigahertz, becomes smaller or equivalent to the size of like the wires and the components you use. And when that happens, you enter this RF regime. So we spent a lot of time thinking about RF design. And what we're gonna do today is machine this microwave box out of a chunk of copper, show you how we do that. Then we're going to gold plate it, which will be fun. And then finally, we're gonna do the final assembly where we insert all the microwave connectors and the circuit boards and solder the whole thing together. And that whole process is pretty fun. So stay tuned. All right, so here's the box. Um, this is, uh, we design everything in Inventor, so thanks to Autodesk for licensing all their products to us uh, for educational use for free, which is super useful for us and trains a lot of people in their software. Uh, so this is uh, the box. You have the, um, this, this metal part. There's a lid. We can uh, hide the lid. You can see how the box works. This is our, this is our chip. It sits right in the center of the box. These are mock-ups for the microwave circuit boards, and these are the G3PO half-shell uh, connectors that go in there. There's also these clamps that hold down uh, the chip. So this is uh, what we're gonna do, and we'll just open up the box here. This is, uh, this is what we wanna make out of a piece of copper. This is gonna take several machining operations. The first thing we'll do, we'll come in from the top here, um, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll create this entire top surface um, by cutting out all these cavities. It's really important to do this in one operation because the critical dimensions on this part are the vertical dimensions, like the thickness of the circuit board and the thickness of the chip really matter for getting the wire bonds to work correctly. So this is all going to be machined um, in one operation and really all the critical dimensions are actually going to be machined with a single end mill. So once we do machine the top, we'll flip the box over, take off the excess material and then cut this hole out from the bottom. And then the final machining ops will be to put these holes in the uh, top and bottom surface. These are quite, um, the tolerances on these uh, G3PO connectors is quite small. Uh, normally I'd, I'd probably use a reamer, but I don't, I wanna have a flat bottom here. So I'm gonna bore them out with a, um, with a end mill. And I've actually uh, already made a couple of these and tuned up the size of the hole um, you know, in, the, in the software to get it bang on what I want. So that's the plan, and so we'll start off by chopping some metal. All right, so we've got a piece of um, copper into the bandsaw. Before we put it in the uh, machine, we gotta get some of these burrs off. When you uh, cut a piece of copper like this, you'll get little burrs uh, on there, which will uh, keep, keep it from holding well in the vise. So I'm just gonna hit those with the file. All right, so we're gonna get this in the machine once it's warmed up and we'll start machining. All right, so here's my Haas TM1P mill. Haven't used it for a while, so we gotta start it up. Once it's started up, we'll uh, run the warm up script and uh, be ready to get going. All right, I've done some machining since I did this setup, so I need to check to make sure that um, all the tools are in there. So the program tells me tool one is a half inch end mill. That looks good. Um, tool two, tool three is a quarter inch end mill. That with three flute, that's in there. Tool five is supposed to be a 0 0.096 inch drill bit. We actually have in there 0.129 inch drill bit. So we'll take it out and we will replace the drill bit.
start. Now what it's going to do is measure the height of this drill bit so that we get the, um, uh, so that everything is a very consistent depth. These automated probe features are, are super useful and I don't think I could machine without them. So T6 is correct and T9's our center drill. So that's it. So we are ready to machine. So what we'll do now is we will close Okay, so we'll go to, we have our program loaded up and um, we can hit cycle start. Really nothing prettier than freshly machined copper. All right, so we've got all the features in here. Our next stop is uh, removing the back that we're using to hold it right now. So that will be um, the second operation. So that, that rim on the outside is what needs to get removed in the next stop. I could have saved myself a lot of time if I had used a, a piece of copper that was a little closer to the final size, another operation on the um, bandsaw. And if I was doing production of these, I would have obviously done that. But because there's just a one-off and machine time isn't such a big deal on a Saturday like today, um, I just did it uh, without that second cut. Got some little burrs on the edges uh, we'll take care of with a deburring tool before we do the next stop. Um, oh yeah, we got actually one more up. We got to get that hole in the back. The hole, this um, this this op just did the face. So what we'll do is we'll we we couldn't really um do we didn't have much precision before, right? Because the t we located off that the raw stock. So this was a very uh, it was precise in the Z direction, but not very precise in X and Y. So what we'll do is we'll clean this up, we'll stick it back in the chuck, and then uh, we'll get a very precise position on the corners, and then go and put that back hole, back side hole in here um, before we move on to the to the side holes. And also there'll be a bunch of deburring. Um, if you look in here, all these little corners are going to need to be deburred, um, which is a under the microscope operation. All right, let's do this one the easy way. There we go, that was a lot easier. So we got the backside hole. The device gets put in here, and we have the gold plating on the backside, and we wire bond from this ledge onto the device. That's for heat sinking. At 100 millikelvin or lower, we're actually using this device. Thermal conductivity is a real problem. Uh, things like aluminum don't conduct heat at these temperatures very well. So we have to use normal metals like gold uh, to get the heat off our chip. The heat can come from a couple places, from readout power, from biasing our devices, or it can also come from the light that we're putting on it. We put this at a telescope, light is hitting it, and that light uh, can heat up the device if we're not careful. There can also be other sources like radioactive decays and cosmic rays hitting the devices. All of those things mean that we have to cool the device to the temperature of the fridge, and that's why we have these, uh, this ability to put gold wire bonds on here. All right, so let's get these sides in. First, we'll get the box 
in vice. We'll bring the probe down and we've got a reference off this front surface here because the critical dimension uh, is this direction so that the connectors fit on top of the circuit board. So we're going to reference off the front of the box here. All right, now we're going to load up the program. Now this program is going to first use the probe uh, on very specific points to make sure we're exactly in the right place. So let's see how that works. This is the automatic probe cycle. We're using the drill bit to pre-drill the holes so that when the end mill comes in to bore them out, it doesn't have to remove very much material. All right, this box is done. We just need to go in here with a deburring tool, get some of those burrs off, and um, we are gonna be ready to gold plate this thing. We're not just deburring this, we're actually making a little shelf uh, that we're gonna load with solder paste. And when we solder it um, on the hot plate, uh, the, that's gonna hold the connectors in and make a tight electrical contact. Um, also stop stray light from getting around these things. Stray light, we talk about, mostly means long wavelength infrared radiation that's getting in from places it shouldn't and has a way of sneaking into our devices and with enough energy to break quasi uh, Cooper pairs and create quasi particles. Well, that's a conversation for another day, though. All right, so we got that done. Now let's deburr the inside of the box. This I have to do under the microscope because my eyes are just not good enough to do it uh, anymore without that. Oh wow, I actually used a new, a brand new uh, end mill, brand new eighth inch end mill here. And um, there, there are like no burrs. It's basically perfect in here. Just goes to show how much uh, even minor wear and tear on your end mill on a material like copper is just really gonna uh, make a big difference in the burrs that get left behind. In this case, it's just essentially perfect. So I really don't need to go in here and do anything. It looks amazing. All right, in the next video, gold plating.